Today we're going to be exposing probably what is the scummiest IPTV service that has ever contacted me. And I say this for a number of reasons. For one, it's completely overpriced for what they're offering. They're using the typical IPTV marketing tactics, but most importantly, I believe they're not just lying to the people that they're having reselling it, but also the charities that they're getting to help promote it, which I believe could even be putting those charities in jeopardy. Now, as many of you know, I get contacted by hundreds of IPTV services a month. I run a streaming channel, it makes sense for them. Now, most of the time the emails go like this. They send me an email saying, promote my service, thousands of channels, TV shows, all for $19.99. <sighs> what a deal better than Netflix, YouTube TV, Hulu combined. I don't accept them for a few reasons. The first one being, I don't wanna be sued. <coughs> Omni and a Hellcat. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> bit of a cough there. But I also know it's not the best. There is thousands of these services, just cologne. They're basically all the same and you could just do a Google search. I don't need to profit off that. But the other thing that really pisses me off with these services is they just frankly not only lie to their subscribers about the risk, but in this case, it's those other two aspects of the charity and the workers that I think are being extra manipulated. Let's head over to the PC so I can tell you guys the story. Okay, so we're gonna start with the last contact I had with this company. They've actually contacted me once before in the past. Now it's interesting because this last person that contacted me, I can't tell if he's in on it and he was just trying to play it off like I don't know what I'm talking about or if he's actually being manipulated because the way the emails went, it sounds like he's being manipulated, but. Also, like his name kind of sounds fake. I'm not going to say it out loud, but it could also be a, a real name. What do I know, right? It just seems like a fake internet name. But this is the email I got. And as you guys can see, it, it, it's a very typical IPTV email, right? We have over 1800 channels. Okay. We offer all sports, which obviously anytime you say you offer all the major leagues, like if you offer all the major leagues, I'm sorry, but you're you're in a legal service, uh, including they offer pay-per-view, which is another key indicator. Um, because as you know, in the United States or any other country, you have to own the rights to that. So for example, let's break this down for a, sec a second with the rights. And th this is going to get juicy. So stick around, guys. YouTube TV here costs around $50 a month in Canada, uh, $60 a month in Canada, depending on when you get it. And you only get, you know, maybe 100 plus channels at most. Um, and some are garbage channels. Um, but one thing they have added and they, they advertise like crazy is NFL. And why is that? Well, the reason for that is because YouTube TV bought the rights and they didn't just buy the rights. They bought the rights for $2 billion because that is a very powerful asset to drive people to your subscription service. So for a company that is new, just from what this guy said, launched in March, or I think the last person said that to me, they don't have $2 billion to, to do. And even if they were leasing the rights, which you can't do, it would be in the hundreds of millions. So unless this is backed by a trillionaire that can afford all the rights to all this, plus free pay-per-view, plus 1800 channels, you guys know where plus VOD was 70,000. You guys know where this is going. It, it's impossible. Now, now that we've discovered this is a pirated service, it's not just any pirated service. It's one that charges $59 a month. <laughs> now I'm laughing because you guys know that's a ridiculous price if you're getting a pirate service. It should be like 20 bucks at most. But I actually think this is part of their tactics. I was in Berlin recently and one of the people I met out there is Stu's Stu's Tech or Stu 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 Reviews. I can't remember what his exact channel name is because there, there's two Stu's. Anyways, we were talking about how much we charge for sponsorships, and I said I charge X amount. And he's like, You're charging too little. When you charge too little, they won't accept your worth. And I say this because this company is that in fact they're not charging too little. Uh, they're charging a, a shit ton of money. If we go on their website, they're charging a lot. Like they're charging, I, it actually, I don't know why it doesn't show on their website. You always have to go through affiliates for some reason. Yeah, that's right. They're charging $59.99 a month, which is clearly, clearly ridiculous for a pirated service. So let me show how the rest of my conversation with Bill went. So as I always reply, I can't promote a legal IPTV. And that's just the truth. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just saying I can't promote it. Now, here is the responses from him. Why would you say it's illegal? Well, surely you can supply me with the content rights uh, Q streaming plays since you have access to all the sports and 1800 channels for a hundredth of the price it would actually cost for all that content rights. 
In turn, he replies, instead of making allegations of wrongdoings, why don't you just ask how we are able to do it? I just don't understand the attitude. We only charge for what our customers watch. And this is a key point here. You can't just say, well, we have 1800 channels, but they only watch five of them. So they don't actually watch the rest. So they're not using it. That's not how things work. When you have access to 1800 channels, they need to own the rights to all of them. You can't just say, well, that customer's using that one, so we're only gonna pay you that one. That, that is not how these content negotiations work in any way, shape, or form. Now, he did send me the link to this video, and we're gonna go to it in a second because I watched about half of it. It's, it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's, it's funny, it's, it's pretty good. Now, here's a little bit more of our conversation. I say, haha, good luck, Bill. I was just trying to end the conversation. Like, I don't wanna go back and forth. To which he said, man, what's your problem? I said, Bill, I receive hundreds of these emails every month from illegal IPT services. I understand you don't get what you're promoting. This is the third time. I think it's the second time they contacted me. Seriously, good luck with your service. I wish you all the best. That's where I wanted it to end. We didn't need to go any further than that. I actually wouldn't even have made this video if he didn't continue. Now, what Bill sent me is quite hilarious. He sent me a, a registered business from the, the government of, I think this is Indiana, um, showing the company is a registered business. It's hilarious because all the legal IPTV companies are registered businesses before they get sued. <laughs> this is why I say, I don't know if Bill actually understands what, and I'm saying his first name, but it really doesn't matter. Um, I don't think he really understands what is going on, right? I don't think he understands that he's promoting a legal service and it's putting him at risk potentially again. It's all uh, relative to when this company gets big enough that they get shut down. To which I respond the most obvious, which is, Bill, yes, anyone can reg register for a business in a corporation regardless, regardless of the legality. In fact, most illegal IPD services do register your business. Let me break it down for you. You claim Q offers all of this. For such a cheap price, this is more content than every other streaming service combined. When legal services such as Netflix, YouTube TV, Hulu, ad channels, they are negotiated with providers, even with the ability to show NFL games, like I explained to you guys, cost billions of dollars every year. I think their contracts for like 8 billion maybe. I talk about this stuff for a living bill. I understand that you might've been told it's legal and that's where I think their CEO slash marketers are potentially lying to them. With that being said, it's none of my business and I could care less. However, some instances of these services can last up to two to three years before the top dogs start to go to jail and being sued in which people move on to the other. I linked Torrent Freak so he could learn more about it. Maybe he does it. And I said, surely your CEO will jump on a Zoom call. But one call he was on recently was on Rumble, right? Obviously not on YouTube because if they put stuff on YouTube and it's too obvious, they know it will get shut down. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we go through this video. So here is a short clip of the CEO. His name is David Waddell. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about David. Uh, calling it the fastest growing company of all time. Uh, been growing very quickly. Um, I can tell you this. We are the fastest growing company in history. That's right. The fastest growing company in history. Now, one thing I'll say, David, if you're the fastest growing company in history and you're promoting uh, soccer or football from Europe, be careful because we know one thing, Sky Sports does not mess around with you pirating football. Okay, so if you're the fastest growing company, make sure you actually own those rights to, that, to those, those football games that you're showing because we know how that works. But let's talk a little bit more about uh, uh, Q streaming and how we know it's not a legitimate uh, uh, registered or I should say uh, owning the rights to their content, right? It's clearly a pirated company. If you haven't seen that already and you watch my channels, then I don't know what to say. So let's start with their website. First of all, it looks like they had a, a high school kid make this out of their, their uh, final grade 11 project. It, right, like legitimate companies don't have a website like this. I'm sorry. Their logo looks like it was made again from like a, a high school project or like the cheapest gig on 5R. Now, these are all minute details, obviously. They promote it on the Fire TV device. Now, even more so, their app is not available in any official app store. As you guys know, you have to be approved to go into those app stores. So apps like QStreaming would be left out. So you have to sideload their IPTV app on your devices or go to their browser. <laughs> now, even more so, I found this video on their official YouTube channel, QStreaming, where it shows how to add a playlist and you have to add an extreme codes M3 playlist. <laughs> 
Now, obviously you guys can tell from the interface, this is the same or very similar interface that we see to pretty much every IPTV service that you'll get, whether it's through Smarters or one of these STB or ST, uh, uh, STB emulator apps. It, it's all practically the same with slightly changed interfaces. I do see that soccer there, David, watch out. I'm telling you, Sky Sports doesn't mess around. Now I looked a little bit into David Waddell just to check it out, you know, checked out his LinkedIn a little bit. And he, it looks like he's been doing this since 2019. Now I don't know if Q was initially something else. My guess is he probably had found this opportunity on a Facebook page. Uh, it said, hey, create your own streaming service, make hundreds of dollars, like they all say. Uh, and then he probably went and just said, hey, this is a good opportunity, let's do it. But otherwise, you know, it looks just like a lot of business stuff, director stuff that clearly hasn't worked out for him. Now, I genuinely have sympathy for people that he's potentially lying to that are selling, saying it's a legitimate service. And we're, we're going to take a look at their Facebook page in a second here. Um, but the one thing I really have sympathy for uh, is the charities that, yes, he's giving money to. Um, which we'll talk about how much, which also is kind of disgusting. Um, but he, I, I do believe he's potentially endangering them. I don't know the exact laws. I would need um, some sort of lawyer that specializes in those areas. Um, but if you're promoting an illegal activity and that illegal activity gets sued and you know you found you didn't do your due diligence, I don't know what could happen to those charities. And again, I, I don't want to, but that kind of does piss me off a little bit because it's a very greasy marketing tactic. So let's look at their Facebook page a, a little bit here. So it's just your classic IPTV promotion. Obviously, they, they try not to show the interface and stuff because they know uh, Facebook will tag it. Uh, in fact, their their page for the most the quickest growing company in history only has 1.7K followers. My guess is this page has probably been shut down a few times would be my my overall uh, guess on this. But of course, like every other service, they promote the typical like, hey, get this. I will admit his marketing, like he he know he knows the audience he's trying to market to, and he does not a bad job doing it, I guess. Like it's very amateur based, um, even for IPTV services. But I think that big thing, like I explained earlier, is the higher price is going to suck people in because you might think it's legit where the other ones aren't, even with all the proof right in front of your face. Now, this is pretty ballsy. They even went and set up a tent at NASCAR, <laughs> and I'm sure they got a lot of subscribers from it. Like I'm sure David is doing very well. These top people very much do um and i'm sure it's set up like a corporation where he thinks he's protected but if you go on torn freak and you read through it these ceos are not protected um eventually you're gonna get caught because you're out there branding it like Woo, look at me look at my service we're on rumble doing these interviews it's very very ballsy now here is the part that really gets me let me go ahead and move this over so they do fundraising where charities can promote and sell their service, um, which they list everything here, thousands of channels, all that sounds great. And wow, jolly me, you promote my service, I'm gonna give you 10%. Now, if that's not predatory, I don't know what is. They're not even giving them, you know, 50% uh, or 100% plus, you know, 50% commission after that, 25%. He's like, I'll give you a good, 10%. Now, I'm sure the separated negotiated contracts, if I wanted to promote it, would be extremely higher. But these are charities. And even when he's using them in order to you know, promote his 100% illegal service, or whatever you want to call it, we can call it a gray area. You know, He can say, well, our servers are over here, whatever. We all, we all can read the room. So that's really what kind of got me motivated to make this video and kind of expose this a little bit. So if you're somebody out there that's thinking of buying it, just know that this is completely overpriced even for what it is. And also, David Waddell, if you want to have a conversation with me on Zoom and explain to me how your service can own all the rights to all that content you're promoting, I would love to hear it. If there's some secret that I'm missing, great, because I'll be a fucking millionaire tomorrow if I can legally promote a service that offers what you're offering but we just know that's not the case. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down below. Is this a legit service or is it, is it a little sketchy? I'll see you guys in the next one.